Hello and welcome to our 15 minute flow series. So we're up to part three now. The first part was just to prime the whole system and just get the body back into the game of just entering and exiting the floor, compressing, expanding, but mostly getting the body breathing. Part two is integrating uh, and seeing if we can play around with our balance, being on one leg, getting our body out of alignment, being able to catch ourselves from falling and recovering from that, as well as a lot of vibration through the system. So that was also a really a uh, couple of nice concepts to, for you to chew on and hopefully you can expand these concepts not just to where I've left you with them but actually have a play around with them and see where you can take them as well. That's where I've done all of my learning and evolution is through taking concepts from really good teachers uh, and not just mimicking the tricks but actually seeing where can I apply these concepts outside and I think as a, if I had one hope for you um, in the context of just being able to see and interface through from one screen to another. If I could just impart that one idea, whether try not to let yourself be limited just to this 15 minute demo, try and take some ideas and play with them down at the park, down at the beach, with your kids, uh, with some elders, anything you like, but see how can this help me in real life? Because this is a movement practice. So we want this practice not to, only to be a comma. And then we want it not to be a full stop. We want it to then evolve more and more out into the real world. So part three, we're going to evolve from our first two and we're going to add circles and waves. So a lot of these circles and waves, um, if you've checked out my online course, Awesome Self, we do a whole couple of lessons really comprehensively working on circles and waves because a lot of my teachings um, are com come in spirals because that's how our body is largely put together. Our connective tissue doesn't work on straight lines, it actually forms in spirals. Um, and so does a lot of what you see in nature. There's uh, very even straight lines with a really huge, strong tree that's sitting up completely tall. That straight line is formed from spirals and that forms integrity. So if we begin to treat our body like this ecosystem that doesn't just go forward, back, up and down, our body actually spirals and moves and is very dynamic and every joint, even if it's called a hinge joint, every joint still circles. Um, if we can start to practice that, uh, our body will become a lot more resilient, a lot more hydrated, a lot more nourished. So we really can, our body can transport nutrients, energy, just by moving more organically. So that's what we're gonna play with today. So how I thought we'd begin that, it's just in a squat position. Once you're in the squat position, no matter how high or low it is, we just want to start en circulating energy from the pelvic floor, expand through the crown of the head, from the crown of the head down to the floor, let our spine soften and slowly roll up. Slowly down, slowly up. It's not uncommon to be very limited in this position, so don't worry again if it's hard, but just rolling your spine down and up as much as you can. What it might look like is down and up, and that's the perfect place to start. We want the spine to start breathing as much as we possibly can. And from there, after we do 10 repetitions of that, we're gonna start doing some spirals first with the knee. So, if I do my right knee first, I'm gonna place my right hand or both hands on the ground. I'm just gonna see, with my hands taking most of the weight, how can my knee draw a circle? I'd like you to do 10 clockwise and 10 anti-clockwise. And I'll kind of hang out for roughly that amount of time. Over time, you might be able to do this circle with the knee without the hands on the ground, but definitely to start with, I would center the weight on my hands and take the knee through that circle, clockwise and anti-clockwise, 10 each direction, plenty of support from the hands. And then when you're ready, we'll go to the other side. Hands on the ground as much as you need to, taking this knee through it can be a, a really small circle as well. And just I want you to feel and focus on the energy of the weight of your body going from the outside of the foot to the inside of the foot. And the knee is just allowing all of this space. Change directions if you haven't already. Be really slow with this. I wouldn't say be careful with anything because we don't want to attach fear to our exercise, but just go slow and mindfully. And that way you're never going to overdo it. After you've done 10 both sides, we're then going to lift ourselves up and we're going to take our knees 
in a circle together. So I shuffle my feet close enough together that my knees are pretty much touching. I imagine that I'm zipping these two thighs together as well with, with my muscles. So I keep them together and then I start with some circles in the knees and I just go slowly and I make the circle small. Slow and small is a way to go and then we just start by going bigger and bigger. Even as this exercise is very small and slow, I can still feel my upper body is counterbalancing my lower body. As my knees go to the right, my upper body goes to the left. And that's what I want, this nice reciprocal relationship, upper and lower body. Slowly let the knees take up more space as you go. Make it easy. And again, even if the heels come off the ground, the upper and lower body are working with each other in opposites. Hips are over to the right, upper bodies to the left. After we've done 10, we go the other direction. Start just as slow and small. And gradually make the movement larger and larger. Move slow enough that there is no pain in the body. We want to be able to send energy and oxygen and nutrients to all of the helping joints in the body. The knees are something that very commonly get very overworked and they get injured easily, but they're very rarely the causation of the injury. It's usually the foot or the pelvis which causes the injury. So we want to see, can we keep our knees resilient and can we keep our hips and feet working together? 10 each direction, take our feet wide, very slowly, Knees are now moving together and apart. And this starts to nourish the hips. None of these exercises are particularly easy, but what are you gonna do? They give, us, they give our body a lot. This has this balance between some strength and some mobility. So you have to work for them. After we've done 10, we go the other direction, so outside in, try to have both knees tracking evenly, even if the movement is smaller. If you've got sore knees or you're not confident, you can make the circles this small and they can go larger and larger. Never do it fast though. I want the whole circle to be evenly paced. So just going for one more after you finish your next one. Good. If you need to give your legs a little bit of a shake out, Last session, moving up towards the pelvis now. Last session, we are doing some transverse hip circles. So circles this way. We're gonna continue on from that. I want you to start with the circle, barely affecting our upper body. And I want it to get larger and larger until the upper body is completely opposing the lower body. Good. Changing directions, start small. And going for anywhere from 10 repetitions to a minute. So if you're, if you're following me, we're kind of doing a, a little under a minute with each direction. And then as your hip circles get larger, the exaggeration of the opposites of the upper and lower body get more and more pronounced. So then it really begins to help the the length tension relationships between the upper and lower body, which is a really good thing. From there, we've done our hips. Now we're gonna do our chest. So first I wanna see, can I keep my hips still and move my torso left to right without too much trouble? And if I can do that, can I move my torso back and forward without displacing the hips too much? So we don't need to be too strict about it, but I don't want the hips doing the work. I actually want the torso moving back, torso moving forward. Then once the torso can do those four actions, side to side, forward, back, we then see, can we play around with letting the torso roll in this transverse plane? And if you like, you can even exaggerate the shoulders a little bit more. And again, we're trying to free up this space around our sternum and first rib 
which is commonly pressed down towards the floor in a very stagnated position. So we want to see, can we add some dynamism to this? Making the circles, if we're moving slow, making the circles larger and larger, and if it's not any pain involved. Slowly other direction, no less than 10. Make it easy. Let the body breathe, like I said. Your eyes can follow the direction that the body's going, which will make it a bit more challenging on the balance. And then after 10, find ourselves back to the center, allow our balance to recalibrate. Then we're going to go, so we've gone knees, hips, chest, now we're going up to the head. Kind of finish off, chin to chest, eyes to sky, chin to chest, eyes to, eyes to the floor, ear to shoulder, eyes to sky, ear to shoulder, chin to chest. That's what I meant to say the first time. And then as we go around, we slowly join those corners and make it more circular. The circle starts small and then it can get larger and larger as our confidence improves. Just letting the head be heavy, the lower body be solid to help our balance. Change it. Now changing directions after you've done 10. And changing directions like this is really good for our balance and our awareness of where we are in time and space. So if you do any sports like golf, tennis, surfing, skiing, where things are moving around you and you're off center a lot, it's really good for you to change your proprioception, change your, where your eyes are, where your eyes perceive the ground. And after you've done 10 repetitions, just slowly allow your balance to recalibrate. And then lastly, what I'd like is us to draw circles now, not just with one specific joint, but with our whole body. So we're gonna take up lots of space. We've done this in a previous video before, and we're moving from right down to the left. And I'd like you to perform 10 breathing squats in 10 different ways. So every circle that you draw, I would like to be slightly different. One, you might hinge from the hips. The second, you might bend at the knees more. So I'd like every circle to be slightly unique. And I'd like this to expand your imagination just as much as it does your body. After 10 different direction or other direction. Again, encourage the body to really breathe. Exhaling down, inhaling up. Feel all of the circles that we've done up to this point to now come into play for a really open and mobile system that also has integrity through space. After you've done your 10, slowly recalibrate back to the center. Roll the shoulders back, take a breath in. And as you breathe out, imagine all of your energy moving through the earth. And before you rush off, just give yourself this moment that you deserve just to feel the body land, feel the breath soften, feel the chest pumping if you're breathing hard, whatever it is, it's all good. And again, even taking a quality from that little movement flow Acknowledging that quality that you felt, that you found, that you enjoyed throughout the session and see how can I integrate that into my day-to-day -day life? Just one resonance of, of that little session. How can I use that in my life? And I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you again for joining and see you in a few weeks for the last part of the series.